Greetings fellow AoE enthusiast and welcome to the next custom civilization concept on this channel. This time we will look at the Swiss with two unique units and cool technologies that help their conservative but very powerful playstyle. The Swiss were a historical antagonist to the Burgundians and were also famous for their mercenaries and their infantry heavy formations during battle that eventually reformed the European warfare to the so-called pike shot tactics. Those tactics relied heavily on pikemen as a front line with cannoneers in the back, rendering the former superiority of cavalry units almost useless. In other words, a great contender for an Age of Empires II civilization concept. Now to understand why the Swiss could fit into the game, we should briefly check out their history. In the beginning, the Swiss territories were integrated into the Holy Roman Empire. Three regions, called Forest Cantons, established the Old Confederacy and were declared as free imperial cities within the Holy Roman Empire. Mainly because their location was hard to reach within the mountainous areas, so it was a lot easier if those cantons would govern themselves mostly independently only having to answer the Holy Roman Emperor himself. It also happened that through those cantons, one of the busiest trade routes from the German parts of the Holy Roman Empire reached all the way down to Italy, making the location highly desirable. The newly formed Old Confederacy was then involved in multiple armed conflicts and even wars with the competing Habsburgs that wanted their land and the newly added Burgundians. Being fierce enemies to the Duchy of Burgundy in the Burgundian Wars spanning from 1474 to 1477, the Swiss were able to defeat and humiliate this central and modern power. This was achieved by defeating the Burgundian forces three times in a row in decisive battles and eventually killing Duke Charles the Bold at the Battle of Nancy, which led to the downfall of Burgundy. Another notable military achievement of the Swiss was a lightning-fast siege of a Burgundian fortification that lasted a mere 45 days. The outcome of those victories led to the idealization of the Swiss army, making their soldiers very popular mercenaries across Europe. Being popular for their military might, the Swiss utilized very potent strategies. One of the most effective ones was the early adaptation of pike squares, reinforced by crossbows, hand cannons and artillery. This again was a main factor that led to the defeat of the Burgundians at Nancy and would also lead to the decline of cavalry superiority in Western Europe, all because the Swiss pikemen were so effective. Looking at the Swiss economy in the Middle Ages, we can see it was very dependent on cattle breeding and the production of cheese, since cow herding was relatively easy in the mountains. Very important to note is that the Swiss geography is mostly mountain area with at least one third of the territory covered in forest. So of course wood supply was never a problem for the Swiss. And last but not least, I want to bring attention to the famous Swiss legend of William Tell. William Tell was a freedom fighter who, according to the story, had to shoot an apple off of his son's head as a punishment for not following order of the tyrant bailiff of the Habsburgs. After hitting his target and freeing his son, he was supposed to be imprisoned, but was able to escape and later kill the bailiff with his crossbow. This would lead to the Old Swiss Confederacy being granted free imperial immediacy, meaning they had a lot more rights to exercise and they could for the most part govern themselves relatively independently from the Holy Roman Empire. Now with the history done, we need to understand how to design a civilization in Age of Empires 2 and there are two different approaches. The first one is something the game might be missing, such as a bonus, tech or unit design that you can center the civilization concept around. With this approach, the civilization name is not as relevant as the civilization bonuses. The second approach is needed if we have a specific civilization name in mind and the bonuses are not as important as the civilization itself. The bonuses are then added after you have decided what fits the general theme of your specific civilization. Most importantly however, a Civ design should always aim at a fun way to play the game providing balanced options for both the player and the opponent. And for this video I used the first approach of a specific bonus for the game because I wanted to create a very cool unique tech. With this in mind however, it was super easy to come up with the Swiss as the most fitting civilization. 
And now we should discuss the civilization icon, the architecture style and the wonder. And as always, if you want to skip to a specific section of the video, just use the chapters function or the timestamps in the description below. Since we are looking at the Swiss civilization, the obvious choice for the Civ icon is the Swiss cross, a white cross with even proportions on red ground representing the old Swiss confederacy that formed in the 14th century as a part of the Holy Roman Empire. If we choose the architecture and the in-game dialogue, it would again be obvious to give them the same architecture and language as the Teutons, however, I believe a separate building style would be appropriate as their medieval style of building differed heavily from the Central and Eastern European architecture style that is in the game. I believe an architecture set that mostly relies on timber frame buildings would be quite fitting. For the wonder, I originally chose the Xion Castle that started construction dating back to the 10th century, but with the trend of giving new civilizations a unique castle design, this might also be their castle. So another candidate for their wonder could be the Abbey Cathedral of St. Gallen. With that out of the way, we can check out the unique units. And yes, the Swiss are getting two unique units. The first one being the unique unit from the castle, which is heavily inspired by the legend of William Tell. So, the unique unit for the Swiss is going to be the Heavy Arbalester, an archer with very high attack and durability, which is however quite slow. I wanted the Heavy Arbalester to be a crossbow variant that could be used situationally, but wouldn't have to be the core of the Swiss army composition, because they will have other strong military options available to them. Essentially, the Heavy Arbalester is supposed to be a very powerful archer that will make up for weaknesses of the Swiss and is great in the late game. As always, we are looking at the Heavy Arbalester in the editor and test out all the values to create a balanced unit for the game. To design the Heavy Arbalester, I needed a blank unit that I could use as a base. The obvious choice was the Genoese crossbowmen, since they have almost the exact same weapon as an Arbalester. And of course the Pavisa shield is a bit distracting and wouldn't be a part of the actual unit, so for now we just have to ignore it. And after a lot of testing, I came up with fairly balanced stats. For the first step, I created a trigger to disable the attack bonuses against cavalry, elephants, camels and ships, so we end up with just the regular pierce attack of a regular archer unit. Then I changed the HP to 50, making them more durable than a regular crossbow. I then removed the pierce armor by setting it to 0 and I increased the melee armor to 2. These stats make sure that the heavy arbalester is quite durable if caught by melee units, but it can still be countered by range units. As I said earlier, the Heavy Arbalester is going to be a slow moving unit, so I set the movement speed to 0.9, making them a lot slower than crossbows at the speed of 0.96 and as fast as a militia. This makes them quite vulnerable to chasing units, so their positioning against for example cavalry is especially important. I then edited the attack stats of the Heavy Arbalester to have 7 base attack, making the Heavy Arbalester a ranged unit with the highest pierce attack and castle age, while still having the regular attack rate of 2.0. This makes them comparable to the Camel Archer, which also provides 7 attack with an attack rate of 2.0. The high attack of the Heavy Arbalester, however, is offset by the low range of 4 tiles, which combined with the slow movement speed, makes hit and run tactics extremely difficult. I also changed the unit cost to 30 wood and 60 gold, making them quite expensive for a foot archer. You can see the full stats on screen now. The heavy arbalester will lose with equal numbers against crossbowmen and cavalry archers if the thumb ring technology is not researched, but they will deal quite well with any melee unit. Once thumb ring is researched, they also start to shine against most other units. For the elite Heavy Arbalester, I decided to make them even stronger while being well balanced due to tech tree restrictions. I increased the HP by 10 from 50 to 60, I increased the base pierce armor from 0 to 1 and the base attack by 3 from 7 to 10. This makes the elite Heavy Arbalester an incredibly powerful archer unit. But keep in mind that they do suffer from the lack of range 
making them vulnerable to siege and chasing cavalry, so the need for a frontline unit is quite clear. The upgrade cost is set to 900 food and 750 gold. Now that we have the first unique unit done, we can look at the second unique unit for the Swiss. And you saw it coming, it is the Imperial Halberdier. As the name suggests, the Imperial Halberdier is an upgrade to the Spearman line in the Imperial Age. And as stated earlier, the Swiss mercenaries were well known in Europe for their good use in melee combat. Before we can look at the stats though, we need to discuss the design behind this unit. Because after a lot of thinking and testing, I strictly decided against a universal halberdier upgrade as a team bonus, such as the Geniteur or the Imperial Skirmisher, for a few different but very good reasons. The first and not too important one is that the Spearman line is considered a trash unit and is generally ignored in team games altogether. This would mean that the Swiss would miss out on a different and better team bonus. More importantly however, I wanted the Swiss to have the best Spearman line in the game by making the Imperial Halberdier an exclusive upgrade to them. And this is a very conscious design choice, and maybe not everyone prefers this decision, but hear me out. If every ally would have access to the same Imperial Halberdier upgrade, then any infantry bonus that applies to the Spearman line, such as the Japanese faster attack or the Teuton melee armor, would make their respective Spearman line a lot better than the Swiss ones. This would also mean that the stat changes from the Imperial Halberdier upgrade would have to be very subtle, because otherwise the upgrade would be too potent. So if we decide against a team bonus and for an exclusive civilization bonus, we can design the Imperial Halberdier to be a lot stronger because the formerly mentioned rules don't apply. And this way we can create the best Spearman line in the game. So to create the Imperial Halberdier, I first chose the Heavy Pikeman as a base unit from the game files. I then created a custom Elite upgrade by changing the research location of a generic Elite upgrade technology. It was then renamed to Imperial Halberdier and I also changed the research cost to 500 food and 750 gold. I then edited the stats of the new Imperial Halberdier. I wanted the unit to be stronger in melee fights but not excessively buff their anti-cavalry use since generic Halberdiers already excel at this task. This means that I left the bonus damage equal to a normal Halberdier. I then increased the base attack from 6 to 8 then I increased the HP from 60 to 65 and I also increased the base melee armor from 0 to 1. This makes them stronger in melee engagements against infantry, but not stronger against cavalry. The only difference to the regular halberdier is that they now two-shot light cavalry and can defeat two hussars one after the other. But against cavalier or paladin they perform just like a halberdier only dealing a few points more damage and enduring one more hit against a cavalier. It is however not enough to get an additional hit against heavy cavalry in and any other cavalry matchups will remain equal to the generic halberdier. I was thinking of increasing the anti-cavalry damage for historical reasons, but I believe game balance is more important here, so I kept it unchanged. So the stats I came up with make them really shine in fights against other halberdiers, not only because they deal more damage, but are also more durable. Against a generic halberdier, they win a 1v1 situation with 29 HP left, but more importantly, they also win against Teutons, Japanese, and also against the best halberdier in the game until now, from the Burmese. This means in Trash Wars, Swiss Halberdiers are really strong against other Halberdiers and infantry, but they are not remarkably better against cavalry and are still vulnerable against ranged units. Now with the unique units done, we can look at the unique techs for the Swiss. In Castle Age, I wanted the Swiss to have a useful military bonus that has a good niche, but is not useless like some of the monk techs from the castle. Looking at you, Madrasa. Since the Swiss utilized very effective pike squares, it was often rather difficult for the enemies to penetrate their formations. So to represent this in game and make a viable technology, the unique tech formations reduces splash damage for your units. 
This means that mangonels, scorpions, bombard cannons and even petards deal roughly 25% less splash damage to your units depending on how far they are away from the impact. And yes, the Gistica and Drugina are also affected, so the splash damage is reduced from 5 to 4. Naturally, only the splash damage and not the direct hit is affected, making mangonel fights still balanced with direct hits. This unique tech is especially useful in archer fights against siege weapons, but also in the late game where onages and siege onages might come into play to counter your tight formations. This technology is also great for your heavy arbalisters since they have a hard time running away from siege. All in all, this is a nice to have technology especially for the cheap price of 200 food and 300 gold, but nothing you need to rush for. It is essentially an option that allows to endure slightly more siege fire. For the Imperial Age unique tech, I had something in mind which was the original idea for a Swiss civilization, the Swiss mercenaries. Now we already have the Kuman mercenaries in the game and another unique tech that has the name mercenaries might be confusing, so I decided for the Swiss German name Reisläufer, which is essentially Swiss mercenaries. But what does this technology actually do? As I've stated earlier, the Swiss used pike squares with pikemen, crossbowmen and hand cannons. We have already seen the Imperial Halberdier and the Heavy Arbalister, but right now we don't have anything for the hand cannons which I really wanted to encourage for the Swiss. So the Imperial Age unique tech removes the food cost for hand cannoneers and adds 10 additional gold to the unit, emphasizing the use of mercenaries. While I do know that they sold mercenaries and didn't buy them themselves, I believe that the gold cost only is a great mechanic missing in the game, which also allows for nice cost synergy with pikemen. The tech will cost 700 food and 300 gold, making it quite affordable in Imperial Age and it can be compared to the forced levy or convenient army unique techs that removes the gold cost of either the militia line or Magyar Hussars. The Reisläufer technology would be worth it if you create 16 or more hand cannons to incorporate in your army and supplement your Imperial Halberdier. Those were the unique techs and now we can check out the civilization bonuses. I wanted the Swiss to have a nice economy bonus so they can compete with other civilizations and also have a good military bonus. In the beginning I mentioned the heavy use of cattle such as cows for dairy production, so bonuses like a free cow in Dark Age or producing cows at the mills come to mind, but I don't think they are good for the game. First, a free cow would be way too similar to the Incas bonus and producing herdables at the mill is getting way too tedious throughout the game in my opinion. I also don't think those bonuses would be a lot of fun to play with, even though they might save some wood. Speaking of wood, however, I also talked about the high amount of forest areas in the Swiss territories. So because a third of the Swiss landscape is forest and there are already a lot of wood related bonuses, I decided for a very powerful but specified military bonus instead. So the first bonus for the Swiss is military buildings cost 50% less wood. This means that barracks, archer ranges, stables and siege workshops cost 50% less wood, but defensive structures such as towers or walls or even society buildings like monasteries or universities are all unaffected and have regular cost. I wanted them to have this bonus not only for reasons of dense forest in Switzerland, but also to accentuate their fast recruitment of peasant militia during conflicts with the Habsburgs and the use of mercenaries that can be deployed quite quickly. The military slash economy bonus also offers for better farming economy since you are able to afford one additional farm for every military building. You are also able to advance a lot faster to the feudal age because you can afford your buildings faster. More about this in the strategies chapter though. The second bonus for the Swiss is also underlining their heavy use of pikemen infantry and mercenaries making their spearmen line create significantly faster. Usually, the Spearman line is created in 22 seconds, but the Swiss Spearman line, keeping the mercenaries in mind, is created in half the time, so only 11 seconds. This bonus allows for very fast usage of the Spearman line, and it can be used to overwhelm the enemy throughout the game if unprepared. 
In earlier ages, this can also work as a panic button to throw units at the enemy, or if you are caught off guard by a fast scout rush. This bonus also synergizes extremely well with the Imperial Halberdier being a super powerful trash unit in Imperial Age. And at this point, I was thinking that those two bonuses might already be enough. You have a very good economy slash military bonus backed up by a smaller military bonus. However, every time I create a new civilization concept, I compare my new civ with already existing ones. If we look for example at the two tins, we can see that although restricted by the tech tree, they are having a lot of civ bonuses. So in general, we can say that the wider the tech tree, the smaller the civ bonuses. So if we leave the Swiss with only those two bonuses, the tech tree has to be quite wide. And although I intend to make them a good late game civ, I wanted them to have a very specific playstyle with both Imperial Halberdier and the reverse trash hand cannons in addition to the slow moving heavy arbalester, or in other words, the Swiss pike square. So in order to encourage this type of play, other options have to be weaker, right? And after a lot of arguing with myself and testing, I ended up with a third military bonus for the Swiss. This bonus is inspired by the super fast siege by the Swiss against certain fortifications, with the Swiss utilizing different siege weapons. And this bonus is going to turn out quite similar to the Burmese and Aztec infantry situation, where one has a unique tech that is a lot better, and the other has a free civilization bonus that is affecting less units or is doing less altogether. With this in mind, the third bonus for the Swiss increases the movement speed of siege workshop units by 15%. You can see how this affects all of the siege weapons available to the Swiss as a sneak peek for the tech tree which we are looking at later. Now we can skip over the unique units and the unique techs because you already know them. And for the team bonus, I wanted something that is useful in team games, but not so much in 1v1 games, because the Swiss are quite powerful already and they need something for team games since the late game options are very unconventional. So this bonus is inspired by the trade route through the old confederacy that connected the German parts of the Holy Roman Empire to the Italian regions. So the team bonus increases movement speed of trade cards, but not trade cogs, by 15%. Now that we know all of the bonuses, we can look at their tech tree. And as we can see at first glance, the Swiss have an amazing archery range, only missing out on the heavy cavalry archer and Parthian tactics. Of course the Arbalester is available because of the broad use of the crossbow in Switzerland and also because of William Tell. Important to note here is that the Swiss will be missing out on both Bracer and Ring Archer armor, so they have the Arbalester for a nice small power spike in Imperial Age, but they eventually need to transition into something else, such as the reverse trash hand cannons that cost only gold. Also, with both the last blacksmith upgrades missing, the Elite Skirmisher will stay with only Castle Age upgrades. Looking at the barracks, the Swiss have every tech available, including the Imperial Halberdier upgrade. The stable also offers the basic options up until Castle Age with Bloodlines, Husbandry and both the Light Cavalry and Knights available to them. But in Imperial Age their cavalry falls off with no Hussar or Paladin and they also miss the last armor upgrade. This means that the Swiss can upgrade remaining knights to cavalier, but they need to transition away from heavy cavalry in the late game. Light cavalry can however be used to counter skirmishes that are portraying a major threat to the late game Swiss army consisting of helps, hand cannons and archers. And while the medieval Swiss didn't use too much cavalry, I think the Hussar upgrade could work if light cavalry only turned out to be too weak. Moving on to the siege workshop, the Swiss have capped rams, siege onager, scorpions and bombard cannons. They also have siege engineers and all of these units are moving 15% faster. Combined with the 50% cheaper Siege Workshop, the Swiss have the potential for very potent Siege options, with the Siege Onager being another counter to skirmishes in the late game. Now why do they not have Siege Ram or Scorpions? Faster Siege Rams are not necessary if you have fast bombard cannons to take down buildings. And also the Swiss have so many good options to counter infantry, cavalry and elephants, and also to an extent archers, so they don't need heavy Scorpions. 
However, it is still very viable to create multiple scorpions in early castle age to fast counter enemy archers or cavalry archers. Looking at the blacksmith, as already mentioned, the Swiss only have access to full infantry upgrades, lacking plate barding armor, bracer and ring archer armor. This of course weakens their arbalester and skirmisher play, as well as late game cavalry options. The Swiss dog is also not the best in the game, and this is due to the Swiss being pretty much landlocked. There are records of naval battles on lakes, but the Swiss were certainly not known for their navy, so they are missing out on heavy demos, galleons, and of course no bracer, and shipwright. They do however have elite cannon galleons and fast fire ships, so they are not entirely useless on water. Also to remind you, the dock itself still has normal wood cost. Moving on to the university, the Swiss are of course lacking heated shot, since they didn't encounter too much navy in the Alps, and they are also missing treadmill crane to make up for their very cheap military buildings. They also don't have arrow slits and bomber towers, but apart from that they have everything else. Most notably masonry and architecture, fortified wall and siege engineers. In the castle, the Swiss have access to every technology, including hoardings and sappers, and you can also see the details of their unique options. The Swiss monastery does offer great options, but they are lacking redemption as a crucial tech to counter mangonels in Castle Age and bombard cannons in the late game. Naturally, because the Swiss already have great siege to counter enemy siege and have cheap military buildings, having redemption as an option wouldn't make sense. In Imperial Age, the Swiss monks also don't have access to illumination, making their regeneration rate stay the same. And last but not least, the Swiss have all the economy upgrades except gold shaft mining and crop rotation, but they do have guilds and faster moving trade cards to support their late game options. Now this was the tech tree and I do think they are quite well balanced with great options in all stages of the game. Their dark age is completely generic apart from a cheaper barracks, so the Swiss are able to execute a way faster rush because they don't need as much wood. This also enables the Swiss to advance to Feudal Age at around 19 population and go for a very fast straight archers build with only 7 villagers on wood. At the moment this is my favorite build with them since they are able to do early damage, counter enemy men at arms or have more army than the opponent when he reaches Feudal Age. Of course you can also execute a standard man at arms build with better farming economy behind since you are saving wood, or do a scout rush that also doesn't need 10 on wood on the way up. In addition, if you are caught off guard by an enemy scout rush, you are able to quickly react with faster producing spearmen that are created in half the normal time. Moving on to the castle age, the Swiss have great options with thumbring crossbows or bloodline knights, all supported by faster moving siege. What I like to do is moving forward and dropping one or even two siege workshops for the price of one. The faster moving siege units are of course supported by pikemen, very acceptable monks or even heavy arbalester from the castle. If the game continues to imperial age, most of the Swiss options are losing quite a bit of steam with crucial upgrades missing and they need to transition into the famous pike square composition consisting of imperial halberdier, heavy arbalester and hand cannons supported by bombard cannons and other siege units. You can of course play arbalester, but I suggest switching into the unique unit after the initial power spike of the early imperial age falls off since they are of course below average without bracer or ring archer armor. So as you can see, the Swiss are a great civilization in 1v1s, but how are you playing them in team games with slow infantry based late game compositions? I suggest going for the flank position and executing the really nice fast archer play and later transitioning into slow but powerful heavy arbalester in imperial age. All in all, the Swiss represent a great 1v1 sieve on open maps and even have very good options on closed maps while being below average on hybrid and water maps. Potential balance changes might include access to the Hussar upgrade and the loss of further dock technologies. Let me know in the comments below how you like the Swiss and what civilization concept you would like to see next. With that being said, have a good one and keep customizing.